What's going on YouTube? Truck and Rob coming at you here. Got me a new microphone I'm gonna try out today. See if we can get a little bit better sound and a little bit more uh, noise reduction from the truck going down the road here. So I'm uh, kind of limited on time. I really enjoy making these videos um, to help everybody out. Well, just for fun. But uh, you know, we gotta go, we gotta drive so we'll uh put the camera up on a dash there and i got this new microphone clipped to me here and we'll see what we can do um going to talk a little bit today about uh winter driving now uh i know a little bit uh, i've never been up into canada or alaska or or done any kind of ice road trucking or anything like that um, but I've ran the 48, been up north, northeast, uh, Buffalo, uh, hell, uh, even last year, uh, had a little debut with a uh, real bad ice storm and damn near whiteout conditions, uh, in southern Texas. How about that? Uh, that storm rolled through Texas pretty bad, um, around, uh, El Paso. El Paso got snowed on last year and it was pretty rough. So you can run into winter conditions a lot of places out here all right now right here right now uh we're just leaving the truck stop right around uh ashtabula ohio here at the uh flying j and uh we're headed over into illinois so i'll be running i-90 uh down to 271 around cleveland and then the 71 down to Columbus, and then the 70 all the way across over into, uh, into Illinois there, going right around Decatur. And uh, you might hear some beeping here. I got this damn uh, on guard system on the truck, and it doesn't like to work when it's real cold for some reason. Uh, it says it's, uh, the radar is blocked. I did a, did a full pre-trip this morning, and scraped the ice off everything it's clean it's not blocked but uh something's going on there it's just uh it happens every time that it's cold so i'm not sure what's going on so that beeping you hear that that's that kind of uh it's throwing an error code on me but nothing to worry about there but uh oh the roads look real good out here i cleaned them up overnight we got a lot of snow um yesterday but uh so we're not going to be doing any kind of extreme uh snow driving in this video here but we'll talk about it um i have three basic rules for surviving winter driving and uh rule number one is slow the hell down all right it's pretty simple slow the hell down when you start getting on on snow and and uh, ice anything like that slow the hell down it's a pretty simple rule step number two rule number two is uh increase your following distance okay now if any of you guys have taken the smith system class uh it's pretty basic all right you want to keep a good following distance anyway all right but what is it minimum of, of seven seconds right and that that seven seconds is in ideal conditions okay that's a minimum minimum seven seconds uh, it's it's pretty common sense out here guys I mean when when the roads are bad um, you want to back off of that truck or back off of that four-wheeler that's in front of you that is the number one reason for accidents out here on the road following too closely all right following too closely that's it right there number one so if you if you're slowing down and you're increasing your following distance meaning backing down backing off the the, the ass of that truck or that four-wheeler not tailgating all right you're gonna you're gonna increase your chances of survival out here by quite a bit all right and uh rule number three is kind of funny when in doubt when in doubt please refer to rule number one how about that slow the hell down okay 
Now, if the roads get really bad and you are uncomfortable, please park it. You know, if, if this is your first time doing it and you're really not comfortable with it, just park it, okay? Find a truck stop, uh, rest area, something, and, and park it, okay? Um, you know, I, I did a video on all the things that you should need, that you should have on the truck, uh, and being prepared for winter, all right? Some survival things that you need for winter. Uh, so go check that out, but I mean driving on the snow driving through winter. It's not as bad I mean you can see right here right now the roads are good. The roads are great through here um, It's no problem No problem at all It's just a little windy and this truck's really noisy <laughs> So I mean don't be afraid of it guys. It's it's not that bad um, For you guys that are just starting out Maybe, you know, uh, you got to check your snow, your chain rules, uh, your chain laws for all your, your uh, separate states that you're going to be going through. And uh, make sure that you've got the proper chains. I'm not going to go into detail on, on chaining up uh, in this video because every, every state is different, okay? Um, it really is. Maybe one day uh, when I get to the house or somewhere in the comfort of, of my, own, uh, my own home, I might do a how to chain up video, something like that, just for educational purposes. But uh, check your state laws on chaining up. And you know, a lot of truckers out here, they say that if they have to chain up, then they ain't gonna go. And that's, that's fine. Um, sometimes I have that attitude. Um, it just depends on, on where you're at in your financial situation and you know what you're trying to do i mean you might be under a hot load that absolutely positively must be delivered on time and you're broke so you need money so i mean it, it's it's entirely up to you i'm not going to tell you to chain up or to not chain up I, i'm going to leave that up to you and go back to what i was saying before that if you're not comfortable uh then park it it's pretty simple you know, uh, there's there's no load or no amount of money out here that's worth your life or somebody else's. Okay, um, but I'll leave that up to you. If you've chained up before and you're you know what you're doing, uh, then by all means, go ahead and do it. You know, um, I'm not going to make that decision for you. So please don't message me and ask me if you should chain up. I'm going to tell you, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if you should chain up or not what's there you know that's that's all up to you um you know a lot of these guys on facebook these truckers on facebook are, are jumping up and down saying that oh, i'll never chain up or whatever you know I've, I've been driving for 32 years and i've never chained up once well that's great you know that's that's great and uh you know me honestly i've been out here 10 years 10 winters uh been in some pretty hairy situations uh been stuck on ice uh, had to get the uh, get the snow melt, get the salt out, and get the shovel out, and uh, all sorts of tr uh, tips and tricks to get myself unstuck off of the ice and snow. And I've only chained up twice. I've chained up twice in my whole career out here. And it wasn't because, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just lucky. I think I just got lucky, that's all. Because <laughs> it seemed like whenever I would pass through somewhere that required uh, chaining up, uh, they'd remove the chain law and the salt trucks, the, the plows were out scraping and, and uh, shaking salt on the road, and the roads ended up being decent by the time it was uh, my time to go through there. Uh, so yeah, maybe I just got lucky, but um, you know, that's up to you. you know, I've, I've always ran flatbed, so we usually operate in daytime hours uh, with the school buses basically and that's a, that's another a lot of people say that they run with the school buses the, the hours that the school buses run uh, Because the snow plows and, and salt shakers are out working the roads uh, in the daytime It's a lot easier to do in the daytime than it is at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning um, Also, you're obviously your, your temperatures drop at night. Hmm. That's that's amazing how that works, right? <laughs> So everything, uh, you know, it might thaw out uh, in 
in the daytime and us flatbedders and, and uh, daytime solar powered truckers will just truck right on through there no change required but uh, you know here comes the other guy that's got to make this run at, at two o'clock in the morning and it ain't so good you know what was thawed out and turned to slush has uh, refrozen and turned to a solid sheet of ice uh, that's what you're gonna run into uh, running the nighttime hours uh, but that's your that's your deal you know uh, that's that's also part of trip planning really uh, try to plan it out to where you can go through these bad passes uh, in the daytime through uh, school bus hours right does that make any sense but uh, I get it I understand that it doesn't always work out like that so just be smart out here guys um, you know driving in winter it's really not that bad it's really not that bad uh, when I used to run Texas Regional from my previous company, uh, in the winter time it would get the freight would just dry up, okay. And a lot of that was just normal winter uh, freight problems, but some of it was from uh, drivers not wanting to run the north, okay. They were scared, and they asked their driver manager if they could stay south. So there's plenty of of uh, inter. Uh, interstate Texas freight basically to uh, to keep them busy which kind of dried up the freight for everybody else so there's drivers out there that are scared of it just absolutely frightened and terror to, uh, scared to death of driving in winter they see a snowflake and they freak out when really it's not that bad okay um, you know usually this area here up northeast uh, Ohio uh, Pennsylvania around Erie all the way up to Buffalo New York uh, they get hammered I mean feet of snow you know to eight eight to ten feet of snow sometimes and uh, it's pretty crazy but as you can see right here right now it ain't that bad shoot we're, we're cruising uh, I don't have the cruise control on or anything but uh, because my damn on guard is out but uh, the roads are good the roads are good there's been there's absolutely nothing to uh, to be afraid of up here we're hammered down and uh, basically got the whole road to ourselves um, not a whole lot of traffic out here so it's good trucking right now right so I just kind of wanted to uh, kind of talk to you guys this pointed towards the new guys just getting in here uh, don't be scared of it and remember those three rules that I said before rule number one slow the hell down Rule number two, increase your following distance. Remember, that's the number one cause of accidents out here is, is following too closely. I cannot stress that enough. Back it down. Back off that damn truck in front of you. Um, it's pretty easy, all right? And then when in doubt, refer to rule number one or park it. It's pretty simple. So if you're uncomfortable, park it. And uh, other than that, truck on. So... Just wanted to kind of cover the basics for you guys. Don't be don't be scared of driving in winter. Uh, a lot of people freak out and uh, think that it, that they're gonna die, you know, with the, just one snowflake that's flying around. <coughs> and uh, hell, I run flatbed. Us flatbedders are out here in this stuff. We're rolling up tarps and, and uh, throwing straps and chains in this stuff. Uh, trucking trucking ain't for sissies, you know. You gotta you gotta man up or woman up and uh, pull up your bootstraps and, and get to work, all right? A lot of people don't do flatbed because of winter. When, really, it ain't that bad. Um, most of the places in the Northeast, <coughs> excuse me, most of the places that get snow and bad weather, uh, your shippers, uh, more likely your shippers, and uh, have they have places inside that you can secure your load uh, throw throw your tarps and uh, and do all the work that you've got to do most of them some of them do not some of them you are going to be outside you are going to be cold um, you know some of those situations I'll have to uh, I'll leave the truck running or at least the bunkie are running and uh, I got to take a break it's just the opposite of a summertime break from uh, heat exhaustion you know uh, you got to get in the truck to cool off in the summertime and, and take a five minute break to cool off and grab some water. Well, it's the same thing in wintertime, but you know, opposite temperatures, obviously. Um, you know, get in the truck, warm up your hands, um, take a break, and then get out and finish up and hit the road. Um, it's not 
that hard. It, it's really not. I mean, even tarping uh, in the winter time, it doesn't take too much longer. It's it's not enough to say I'll never run flatbed because of winter. I mean, that's just that's stupid. If you want to run flatbed, come run flatbed. Winter ain't a big deal. Like I said, most of the the shippers and receivers have inside places uh, that you can tarp and, and do all your work. Okay, and. Um, and when you're delivering the load, uh, it's usually the same deal. If you've got a, haul, a load of coils or something that can't get wet, <coughs> chances are it's going inside. They're going to put it inside somewhere. All right, most of the time. Now, uh, you know, sometimes we pick up loads that are they pull them out of the mud and snow, and they want it tarped. Uh, they want it tarped for the ride. And then they take it off to the trailer and they throw it right back out in the yard and in the mud and the snow, all right? Um, it's kind of funny, but it's the job. That's the job. You know, a lot of people cry and, and bitch and moan about that. Now, it doesn't make any sense, but really it does. It, uh, you know, they're using salt on the roads out here and they don't want to get salt on their product. You know, it's not mud and, and it's not uh, the snow that they're worried about. It's the salt. And, and road grime through winter. I mean, look at your truck in the winter time of, of going through slush and, and, and bad roads. It's a mess, you know, so all that stuff is slinging up and getting all over your steel and, and that sort of stuff and it ruins the product. So that's why they want that stuff tarped is to protect it from the salt. But, uh, but yeah, flatbed, is, uh, it's fun in the winter time. It's definitely a, a little bit harder, but oh well. You know, I, I still enjoy it. Um, I'll probably never stop flatbedding. And, uh, you know, come rain, rain, sleet, or snow, we'll be out there working, all right? Just, uh, that's the job. That's the job. That's especially flatbedding. So, all right, guys, that's uh, about all I got for you. Pretty basic video here. Just don't be scared of winter. It ain't that bad. You'll be all right. And uh, if it ain't safe, if you feel really bad about it, then park it. Do your research. Check your weather. Um, everybody's got a smartphone or, or tablet or laptop or something in the truck nowadays. Check ahead. Do your trip planning. See what the weather's like up ahead. If it's a blizzard, if it's whiteout conditions, if everybody's saying on Facebook that it's shut down, uh, don't do it, man. Or send pictures of all the accidents. Uh, maybe you might want to reroute yourself uh, a little bit. You know, do some trip planning. Pick up the map and uh, figure out another way. Um, hell, I've done, I've gone, you know, hundreds of miles uh, out of route just to save, just to deliver the load, you know, um, just to, to keep myself from being shut down for three or four days on, you know, say like go through Wyoming or, or something like that, to where sometimes the roads are shut down for a day or two, uh, especially if you get a real bad storm coming up through there and uh, they're, uh, you know, they've got the road shut down because of accidents and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you could be sitting there for three, four days when you could reroute yourself, you know, 100, uh, even 200 miles out of route, uh, take a, a southern route that's not closed down, you'll still deliver the load. You're not going to be stuck there for three or four days, okay? Um, yeah, you're going to lose a little bit of money on the outer route. You're going to use a little bit of more fuel. <coughs> but it's only going to be a four to five hour delay you know that's that's it a four or five hour delay uh going uh, uh two 200 miles out of route versus being stuck somewhere for three or four days okay um i'll take the three i'll take the the four or five hour delay uh, going out of route and eat some fuel to uh to get this load off and get under the next one because guess what that's the job <laughs> We got a we got a haul freight, so being holed up at the truck stop for uh, three four days uh, just because of poor planning, the poor poor trip planning, poor routing. Uh, you know, don't come crying to me about it. And, uh, that's your own fault. I understand some routes are completely unavoidable. Uh, you get up in the northwest, that's uh, it's pretty limited. You know, if the if the interstate is shut down, chances are all the smaller roads. Are going to be shut down as well so you might want to think a big think of a big 
uh, route change, you know, go south a little bit and catch another interstate. It sucks. It sucks, but that's that's uh, the difference between, uh, like I said, uh, you know, you, you might not even get a paycheck that week, that that three or four days that you're shut down and hanging out at the truck stop versus going two, 200 miles out of route to deliver the load, all right? <coughs> So it's just that easy, guys. You got to be smart out here and uh, be a professional. Set the example out here. If, if somebody needs help with routing, uh, sometimes guys will get on the CB radio and ask for a route or ask for road conditions. Pick up the microphone and help them. You know, um, we got to we got to start making a change out here. We got to start making trucking great again, and uh, we're the only ones that can do that. All right, so help everybody out. Be good, be safe. Uh, like I said, be the professional, set the example. That's all I got for you on this one. So, uh, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later.